Yeah. Welcome. So glad you're here today uh, and online. Director Shirtcliffe, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any members of the media here in the room? You would like to introduce yourself or also online, just raise your hand so we can find out who you are and who you represent. Thank you. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules. Remember to mute your cell phones. Um, and we do have someone who's already filled out a card who would like to speak to the board during public participation. And just a reminder, board members, to turn your mics on when you speak and turn them off when you're finished. So I've asked um, Super Superintendent Corden to do the review of the agenda and move into communications to the board thereafter. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, welcome everyone, great to see you tonight. The um, review of the agenda is as published with one amendment. Actually, we have two additional hires to add to item number one, so technically two amendments. Uh, Jeff Eichenbush um, as the district safety coordinator and Kayla Luther as a LRC teacher down at Green Elementary. And those are the amendments uh, from last uh, publication. Thank you. Nope, not tonight. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, for licensed staff, we have Heather Kehoe first grade teacher at Green Elementary School, Kayla Luther, LRC teacher at Green Elementary School. And also we're pleased to bring forward the recommendation to hire Jeff Eichenbush as our new district safety coordinator. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the pending recommendations for employment as presented. I move to approve the recommendations as recommended. Is there a second? Second Any discussion? I just want to make a comment on our new district safety coordinator. What a home run hire. Um, just, I, I understand we had quite a few really top-notch applicants and um, to have Jeff join this district is amazing, so. Great job. Kudos to everybody that played a role in that. Okay, all those. Oh, all I, those. I also wanted to second um, what Rod's saying. His resume is incredible, and he's a fellow criminal justice Western graduate. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so all those in favor? Okay, all opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I'm moving on to... Um, something that you received information on, and that is to be on the Oregon School Board Association Board of Directors. Um, this is a two year term. And um, if you're still, if anybody wants to put in for it, um, I think um, Mr. Hammerson has said that he would like to do it. Um, if, if anybody wants to think about this or wait until our next board meeting, uh, we have until then to make a decision, but if you're all ready to rock and roll, I would entertain a motion to nominate Director Hammerson. I have been moving to that motion to do so. A second? Okay. okay. So I'm going to read how it will read, okay, the motion. So uh, this is to nominate Director Hammerson to serve as a regional member of the OSBA Board of Directors. This nomination would be for the Douglas and South County or South Coast region. And uh, it is a two year term. So all those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Go ahead. Vote no, but you should never vote for yourself. No, it's bad luck. <laughs> okay. Well, motion. <laughs> motion carries. 
motion carries. Yeah. Now that will, you know, once we submit that, we will have to vote on this. You know, our whole region will vote on it. So it's it's not a for sure you're in, but your name is in the hat to be on the ballot. So, okay, committee chairman, Rod Cotton, would you give us the building insights committee report? Sure, we had a uh, building insights meeting yesterday. Thanks. And um, very good meeting. And uh, basically it was around uh, the two properties that we're going to talk about tonight. Cheryl will, will basically lead the discussion on the purchase of uh, the two properties. There's, there's three that we do not own. And if we get these two purchased, then there'll be one left. And um, uh, when the original, and I didn't know this till yesterday, when the original high school, the board at that time, it wasn't us, of course, it's been there a long time, but I understand they didn't have enough money to buy the Finley area where we've been buying up the, the home. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of gone full circle. Um, but uh, years ago, uh, 20 some years ago, Keith, how many years ago? <laughs> we were both a long time ago. Um, that's when we started buying, the district started buying those properties, knowing that we needed a space or perhaps uh, baseball fields, softball fields, green space. And of course, we, you, everybody knows we have that beautiful softball field there now. So everything's just kind of gone full circle. And I think um, we're probably one of the few districts in the state uh, that owns homes, but it's an income also. We're getting income off that. And uh, and we're also enhancing our property um, at the high school. Because I think without that, without the Finley Field property, it's what, 26 acres? The high school sits on 26 acres, somewhere like that. So if you add 11 more acres, it's kind of cool. So, um, so the board, the the committee discussed it, and uh, we're coming with a recommendation that the rest of the that we get a yes vote to purchase those two properties. So that's basically my report. So great, thank you, Director Cotton. Um, Cheryl Northam, would you please take it away and work your magic and explain all of this to us? Well, I think Rod did a pretty darn good job. So I, I don't have a whole I lot to add. Oh, okay. Um, you guys received a memo last week and I just handed you a slightly updated memo, which has a little more detail at the very bottom. That packet has a history on the second page of the homes that we've purchased. When did we purchase them and what we purchased them for? And then there's two maps in the back, and I apologize for this one that's mostly green. I can't print out a black and white copy of this anymore, so I've used this for so many things over the years that there's all these random notes there for, for various reasons. But everything green, we own, and the uh, properties, the three properties that aren't colored in, we don't own yet. And then I just pulled up kind of a copy off what I can pull up on that fourth page, and so you guys have a nice visual of what's what's going on back there. Although it is outdated because it still has a house on 612 Finley mm -hmm. and it's no longer the softball field. So uh, we, yeah, these two particular homeowners have approached Tracy over the years and said that, uh, you know, someday, maybe in the future, well, life changes. And they both approached us uh, here very recently with the intent to sell to us. So the, the details on the two properties are on the memo in front of you. Um, when if and when we purchase these, the cost of it will be charged to our um, rentals fund. Right now, we do have about a little over $300,000 in our rentals fund. Um, we'll probably gain net another one hundred and eighty dollars over the course of the year. So if we were to buy both these homes at the end of the year, that particular fund would be in a negative cash position. That's actually accounting acceptable. Um, it, you'd maybe borrow cash, I suppose, from another fund, but um, since the expenses... Uh, we don't have like payroll or anything out of this one. Um, it's what we did when they approached us, five different people approached us to buy on Selmar that one year. So that fund also went into a negative cash position, but I expect by the end of 2025 that it'll be in the black again. Um, also, so we have a 
cash and we have appropriation, which is our spending authority. We only budgeted about $500,000 in that fund to buy property. So towards the end of the school year, we'll ask you to make an appropriation adjustment that usually happens in June. And so then that will have given us the spending authority and it's okay to do it after the fact. Um, all the 200 funds are combined together for financial statement presentation. And so other funds have positive cash balances in them, which offsets this negative cash balance. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Cheryl that you haven't already asked her? If not, I would entertain a motion to purchase properties located behind Roseburg High School, including 364 West Selmar Court for 300,000 and 642 West Finley Avenue for 499,000. Uh, I will motion to purchase both properties. I'll second. Great. Any additional discussion? Wonderful. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, now the public is provided an opportunity to address the board. Each person is allowed two minutes to share comments. Those who are present are asked and they have completed a card if we have any other that would like to address the board to uh, in, fill out a card. Um, and we don't have anyone, do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to participate? Okay. Assistant uh, Superintendent Michelle Nee will keep the two minute timer. Um, and as always, you're welcome to write to us, email, however, we would love to hear from you. I do wanna stress one thing and, and you'll be hearing me say this, um, in the upcoming meetings. And it's mostly just to give people who are contemplating speaking before the board a heads up. While speakers may offer objective criticism of operations and programs, the board will not hear personal complaints concerning district personnel, nor against any person connected with the school system, including students and staff. So that being said, Michelle, take it away. All right, we have one public comment card and that is for Janae Trimble. Please come on up. Um, just to let you know, I will start the timer. So when the alarm goes off, please wrap up your comments. So if you have two minutes. Is your mic on? Good yeah. job. There. Green's good. Sorry, I have plugged up ears so I cannot hear. Um, so some of you may or may not know me. Uh, my name is Janae Trimble. Whoa, that was bad. Wow. <laughs> five sets, five words. Okay, I'll be leaving. You need to restart. <laughs> me, I needed to add some relief today. Yeah, comic sorry, relief yeah. today. I did not intend that though. I'm so sorry, Janae. We will start okay. over again. I forgive you. <laughs> Um, so my name is Janae Trimble. Um, I'm the chapter chair of Moms for Liberty. Um, we are the only chapter in Oregon currently. And what we are is a nonpartisan nonprofit uh, parents' rights group. And what I want to share with you guys is I know that a lot of you have been aware of the Title IX changes that um, came into effect August 1st. Um, and Moms for Liberty actually filed a lawsuit against the um, current administration along with um, Female Athletes United, Young America Foundation, and the states of Wyoming, Utah, Alaska, and Kansas. Um, the judge that we have in Kansas, uh, he allowed us to have an injunction based on um, the information he has uh, looked at that we will win that um, suit. So he has given us an injunction that actually has um, no effective date right now. And so what that means for our school districts, our schools, um, we have a lot of... Uh, current members, and we've been talking to a lot of people to get new members. If they have a minor child K through 12 uh, at a school that receives public funding or any type of public dollars, including some of the public or private schools, uh, they will their school will be exempted federally from the Title IX changes, meaning um, if a complaint is brought up to the school, uh, to the Title IX coordinator federally, that school will not be held responsible 
um, if their school is on the list. Um, so some of our members, uh, I just want to let you guys know, we already have eight schools for Roseburg School District, total of uh, 22 currently that we have gathered so far. Uh, 19 are in Roseburg or in the Douglas County. And um, so what what happens is the court gets those, just the school names only, and then uh, or Moms for Liberty National gets the names um, by when a member signs up and they put Douglas County down and then there's a drop down bar. They put what schools they go to. Those schools are then sent to the judge. Um, and so that's how it's updated. And then as far as I know, it'll be sent to the districts. So I just want to let you guys know that that's what's going on. Thank you so much, Janae. We appreciate it. Okay. I will say that our next meeting is September 11th. It will be a regular board meeting at Fullerton, Fullerton 4 Elementary School. I will be in Pennsylvania visiting grandchildren. So I will not be here, but Vice Chair Cotton has graciously agreed to run the meeting. And a little bit late, but happy birthday to our treasured director and Kremitz. So that is all of the regular business meeting. Uh, it's probably the fastest board meeting we've had in the history of Roseburg Public Schools. Uh, I feel like I deserve a banner or a trophy. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, this regular business has concluded and barring any objections, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>